Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, we're going to take another minute to let other participants come in. Uh, then we'll start with today's webinar on audio blogging and podcasting and interviewing. How's everyone today? Ho hopefully you're in the mood to learn a few things that you didn't know about audio podcasting. All right, got a few more people joining in. Okay, hold on one second. All right, today we're going to get into the current trend right now. Um, a while ago it was video podcasting and then went, went into, went into uh, actually it was live streaming and then video podcasting and now the current trend is audio podcasting. Now, throughout this presentation, we will have, uh, I will use the word blogging and podcasting, but I'll explain the difference in the two. I prefer podcasting, video podcasting, audio podcasting. And audio blogging and podcasting is slightly different between the two, but I tend to use them interchangeably. So you will hear people in the industry, they will, the people that are doing podcasting, they may say blogging, blogging, podcast. But I will get into that shortly, the difference between the two. So again, uh, mic check one two, mic check one two, audio pod, audio blogging, podcasting, and interviewing. As a reminder, this is a digital storytelling series with PBS Western Reserve. Community partners, members, and individuals can learn the tools in creating digital content for effective digital storytelling. You will learn about digital content and creation through website creation, video, audio, podcasting, content strategy, and more. During the webinar, feel free to submit any questions or comments in the chat box during the presentation. Now, today's topics, we're going to start with audio podcasting and blogging. What is audio podcasting and blogging? The benefits of audio podcasting and blogging. Now, before you even start, we're going to kind of prep you before you even start an audio blog or podcast. Then you have, we're going to walk you through the presentation to the general format. And the format includes the interviewing the tips as well. And, bef and the basic steps before you publish it, i.e. what platforms and what have you, you can go to to start uh, disseminating your uh, podcast out to people. All right. First, we're going to start with audio podcasting versus audio blogging. Audio blogs are typically short compared to podcasts, which are usually longer. Hence, if you listen to a podcast on an app or a website, um, one of my go-tos is NPR or a couple of other ones, uh, Blavity, uh, Oxy, they tend to go longer and audio blogs it tend to maybe three four minutes depending on the, the the goal of your blog podcasts tend to have a structure including interviews and, and released as episodes but as t 
time goes along, people are starting to morph that same practice into blogs. Podcasts also provide revenue opportunities. Where I've been coaching two people, you have a local podcast you're putting together, go to small businesses and and actually get donations and give them acknowledgments on your podcast, depending on your audience and 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 topic. <clears throat> Audio blogs are more flexible and creative with the content and the scheduling. With video blogs, it tends to it could be any topic, walk through for the day, what I'm doing today, whatever, there's no structure to it. When you do a video podcast, it's treated like a TV show. So same here. Audio podcasts are treated like radio shows or radio programs. Audio blogs is free form, and it depends on your goals of which one you want to choose. But again, a lot of bloggers are starting to, audio bloggers are starting to morph into audio podcasts in order to generate revenue. Podcasting or blogging is based on your content goal or target audience. That's one of the most imperative parts. Are you trying to educate, inform news or what have you? Then you may want to go podcasting. If it's about the daily process of maybe showing a, a hobby of gardening where you may do a quick blog to talk about what you did today and what have you on any kind of regular schedule, any length of, length of uh, content, you might want to go blogging. So it depends on your content goal and your, and your target audience. Podcasting and blogging, both can be a part of your audio program. A lot of online celebrities tend to have a, for example, a video podcast where it's structured. And then on the off day, they may want to come in and do a quick stream, which is a blog. So you can mix, mix the two. So podcasting and blogging can be put together, but again, it's starting to morph into one. And that one can kind of just be, hey, here's my platform. Here's my audio platform, here's my video platform. They all are starting to become one. What is audio podcasting and blogging? Uh, really, if you go and Google search, there is no really set definition. So I kind of put pieces together. And you can almost call it like blogging is more of like a diary. Podcasting is, is the storytelling part. So what is audio podcasting and blogging? An audio podcast or a blog is a series of digital audio content provided on the web or apps. Apps include Spotify, uh, Amazon, Audible, uh, iHeartRadio, talk show aspects. Users have access to through computers or mobile devices to engage your digital content, meaning listen to it. Another aspect, an online platform, a social media account where a person regularly posts audio content. Regularly is the key word. <clears throat> this can range from information, news, to opinion-based information. Now, the benefits of audio blogging. When you're looking at audio blogging compared to video, here's where a lot of these benefits come from. Doing an audio blog is really easier to learn where most of the time it's just you practicing the format or taking the information but really all you need for, for starters is a in my opinion a microphone and a device to record it and the format it comes from the length of time and the structure of the content you're putting out on it so it's not a lot of it's not a deep learning curve as video can be or effective video can be but video when you got video you have to be you have more transparency your your, your home environment, people see on the street, you, got, you actually got your face. With audio, it's more, a lot of people kind of go this route because you're not really, you don't have your face, you have your name and your voice. So it's less transparency into your world. Audio content can be delivered directly to your audience through web or apps. Same thing like video, but it's actually more platforms for audio than it is video. Most people go, Take video, if you look at it, you have uh, <clears throat> the YouTube of the world, Facebook, IG. Those are the top three. Maybe there's a couple others I know of, but when it comes to audio, there are more platforms for audio, many more. Now, when you are consuming content, digital content, if you think about it, when you're watching video, 
if you want to watch it, you have to stop what you're doing. Audio, all the time, listen to the radio or podcast in your car, uh, series, or whatever. You can actually be doing other things while you're engaging your audio content. That's, that's the value. It's one of the greatest benefits of audio blogging. When it comes to setting up equipment, if you have a video podcast, a video blog, you need a camera, computer, software, down the line, you're investing in a few hundred bucks just to start. With audio blogging, it's simple. It, it can be as simple as, and I don't, I don't suggest it, just using straight, talking straight to your phone. A lot of people do that. But I would suggest getting a, which I'll tell you on the back end, invest in a USB microphone or a low cost mic that you can plug into your computer if you're using a laptop or a phone. So the investment in equipment, you can start off on, on the low end and then eventually move up. Helps lead audience to written content. So let's say you have a, we talked about writing for the web earlier in this series, adding audio will can drive people to your written content. Audio blogging allows for more mistakes, easier recovery. Uh, a lot of people get nervous when doing video. Well, you won't get as nervous doing audio. You can easily just start over. It's more personal than video. Now, a lot of people may not understand this, but if you look at your friends that you converse with on a regular basis, are you talking to them or are you in front of them? Most of the time you might be talking to them on the phone or you're communicating through the internet or whatever. But when you actually have to, when you're engaging someone, listening requires more focus. When you're watching video, there could be deterrence in the video, or it could be bad audio with the video, whatever. But audio makes you focus in on the content more so than video. Audio blogs, same like video. The audience can consume it everywhere. It could be on the app, it could be over the radio, or what have you. Easier to share. You can have on many platforms. People sharing music across Spotify. People might be sharing uh, music across iHeart. Audio content is more shareable and actually shared more than video content, believe it or not. Now, here are some stats. To Let's say you have a business and uh, your company may want to start an audio blog, or you might be that person to start that audio blog for your company or your nonprofit organization or whatever. Here's some stats to kind of present or share with those that uh, you have to convince to do so. More than 70% of U.S. adults listen to digital audio content at least once a month in 2020. And most of that was on, on a smartphone. All right. And they say mobile, but they also could be in your car. The average time spent listening weekly is 16 hours and 14 minutes in 2021. Now, I'm, I'm contributing that to the recent pandemic where a lot of people started. Uh, I was hearing the trends of people watching, watching less television, read more books, and listen to more podcasts. So you can attribute that to that, to that phenomenon. Active listeners spent two hours and five minutes per day on audio in 2020. That's two hours. So the average podcast, we suggest about 25 minutes, but the average is about 10. So if you put that in that two hours and five minutes, that can let you know how many, which is part of the stat that's coming up, how many podcasts people may listen to or episodes a day. 51% of those aged 12 and up frequently or sometimes listen to audio with other people. Well, I'm a little older, but we always did that with radio. So that also transpires to audio podcasts. Now, with this percentage rising to 69% among those two, age 12 to 34. So you have you may have a group of people listen to a podcast. On average, weekly podcast audiences listen to eight podcasts. And that's nationwide. Now, locally, you might have to educate people or let people know that content is out there, hence marketing or word of mouth. Some of the best times to, the, the most effective time people are listening to podcasts between 7 and 10 in the morning, 5 and 8 at night. Now, if you actually listen to podcasts, kind of gauge on what time you're listening to it. Some people might listen to it during working hours. 
or maybe on a Saturday morning, Sunday, you know what have you. But see, these are basic stats. Now, you have the audio podcast or blog format. This is before you record. Questions you need to ask yourself to kind of keep you directed or focused on what this blog or podcast is going to be about. What is your format? What is your podcast or blog going to say? What do you want people to do? What actions do you want them to take? What's your content? What's your audio podcast or blog going to look like? Is it going to be one a one-person podcast or a blog? Most podcasts have two or three people. Most blogs may have one. So you have, is it you doing it or are you going to have multiple people doing it? Now, one aspect, if you have multiple people, some say, well, they get, so let's say you're all doing a mobile, you're all remote. A lot of people get on Skype to have these podcast talks and make sure everybody has a, a microphone or what have you, and you record it on Skype or you record it on Zoom and take the audio off of that. A lot of people are doing that right now, starting off. You're going to have co-hosts or, or you're going to have guests on your podcast or your blog. These are things to think about. How long will your episodes be? Now, the template I'm going to give you later, I, I scaled it to five to 10 minutes. So it all depends on you and what you're comfortable with. But again, the scale says between 25, 22 to 25 minutes is max. But depending on your content and the information you have, you need to you need to take a, an assessment on that. Style. Is it casual? Is it corporate? Now, one of the things I tell people to do, if you're an avid podcast listener, is take a listen to other podcasts. Check out their approach. What is it that you like, what you don't like? Depends on your content and who your target market is. All right, this is the podcast blog preparation. This is to kind of get your mindset on how you're going to approach it and how you're going to conduct it. Again, I've said this a couple of times, it's imperative. Listen to other audio podcasts that reflect your desired approach. And if you don't listen to podcasts, start doing that. Start engaging people in regard or engaging podcasts. Say, okay, I listen to this podcast or yeah, go ask other people if they do. Actually, community members, if you want to reach out to the community or if you got coworkers, if you're doing one for your business, Ask what podcasts, what outlets did they listen to, and then go take a look at it and listen to it for yourself and then take notes. Take notes while you do this. Prepare talking points in advance. When you have your overarching goal and you're starting to bring out points, write all this stuff down. That's the, There's one key aspect on this. A lot of people get on audio blogs. Blogs are more casual, in the list of time, or what have you, and people tend to wean the blogs. Oh, I'm just going to get here and start talking just like the video blogs or what have you. So you have to sit back and, and ask yourself, what am I going to say and what order I'm going to say it in? Practice and listen with your headphones and redo. The one thing I also would suggest, or well, the many suggestions I make, is listen to yourself. Do go through a practice run. You can just start with your phone. Just talk and listen to yourself. Critique yourself. And then get someone else to listen to it. And then redo it. You got to practice this before you even start this. If you want to result in good, good results. Now, another key, and a lot of people seriously do this, you got to find a quiet place that sets your podcast or blog tone. You might be, some people go sit in the closet. Some people may even go to the library. Some people may sit in their car. If you go online, a lot of these vloggers that are on Facebook posting videos every day, a lot of them are sitting in their cars. Acoustic bass and it's quiet, or they may go uh, sit in the park somewhere in that car. But if you're doing a blog, just find a quiet place at home at a certain time to record it. Now, if you are with the tone of your podcast, if it's about nature, you go sit in the park. So it depends on the surrounding sounds that decorate your, your podcast. But 
first find a quiet place. All right, you have your your format. This is the basic template, and I'm gonna go through this slowly. This is the basic template of most podcasts, and actually, also some video podcasts. This this is very similar to what I gave last week for the video format, and I'm gonna go through this slowly on this. All right, again, in social media, typical length of an audio podcast, uh, the most listened to, I will say, is five to 10 minutes. You can take it to 22, especially if you have a guest or you have in-depth content. You can put that out there. But five to 10 minutes will give you more assurance of people listening to your podcast all the way through. And you have to think about the speed of life with the multitasking. I mentioned earlier how you could be doing other things while listening to a podcast. This tends to lend itself to you can go 20, 20 minutes or plus because you might be doing something else. But the five, 10 minutes, that would assure that you, people will listen to it all the way through. Because when you start taking stats of your audio podcast or even video, you will have a stat of what percentage, what's the average percentage of viewership or listenership on the podcast. Maybe if you got a five minute video, especially video, five minute video, and somebody may watch it for 30 or 40 percent of it and drop off. Same thing with audio. Five to 10 minutes would create a greater insurance that people will listen to more of your content. All right. At the very beginning of your podcast or your blog, you have the show intro, which is your topic overview. You give a 15 to 30 second introduction of what your topic is about. You may go out and say, well, today, if you're gardening, today we're going to talk about the aspects of watering on a sunny day. What is the best time to water your plants? Uh, how much water should you use? You introduce the topics at the very beginning of 15 to 30 seconds. After that, you have the podcast blog intro. I mentioned this with video last week, where if you go to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, you can look up a blog, podcast or blog intros, where it's like 15 to 30 second introductions by a voiceover talent with music. Now, with a blog, a lot of people don't do that. They just get on and start recording and start talking and go from there. Because if you go and watch TikTok or uh, IG videos. Here's a secret. Look at the video and close your eyes and listen to it. That's audio blog. Because most of the videos you see on, on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever, not Snapchat, uh, Instagram, they don't have the intro. You just have people showing themselves, doing a certain thing, talking about a certain thing, but they're really, it's a audio blog. Watch the next video, especially when someone is trying to educate or teach something, watch that video with your eyes closed, and that's the format of an audio blog. Now here, with a podcast, this is where you will have an intro, where you do your, your introduction of yourself. You have this, this intro with a pro produced piece with a voiceover talent and music. That's podcast treatment, especially if you want to get to the point of generating revenue for your audio content. And you have, let's say you have multiple topics. Topic one, you talk about it for two minutes. Now, when you're in this in this field and you're doing audio, you will realize that you can say a lot in two minutes. That's a long time to really talk about a topic in, in the audio world, especially for 10. Now, I put, let's say, three to three topics at two minutes apiece. You can talk about a topic for five minutes if you want to. It's up to you. But if you want to get more content, and more things to talk about in it and to engage your audience. This is the format that I choose. And then you start closing out a call to action, meaning, hey, if you like this podcast, share this with a friend uh, and give a special shout out to one of your contributors or somebody on your team that's helping push your content or what have you. Then you go to an outro. This is really a repeat of the intro. So again, with this, this podcast blog format, it's five to 10 minutes. Now, if you want to take it to 20, well, what's the easiest thing to do? In that topic session, 
a topic section, you can have more than one topic, or you can just simply double the time on each topic. Now, here's something to think about when it comes to blogs and podcasts. With podcasts, it's best to have two to three, four people on a podcast to engage the audience. Most of these radio talk shows, this transpires to audio podcasts, have multiple people, multiple hosts on the show. Can you imagine just one person, listening to one person for 20 minutes? Well, it depends on the topic. Blogs are only one person, and that's why they're shorter. Two, three minutes, five minutes tops or whatever, but it depends on your topic, depends on your approach, is how long you make this. So this, this page right here is the typical template for an effective video and audio podcast, multiple people, and provides the, the possibility of, depending on you, to generate revenue. Blogs is one of those free form, free creative pieces, as long as you want it, whenever you want it. And it mentioned earlier, you can do both. You can do both. So let's say as there's a, a person giving news, and then they might come in and say, well, here's serious news about the community and do a quick blog just off the cuff in a neighborhood somewhere. You can mix the two, but this is a typical format of a good video and audio podcast. If you go back to our website, you will see the video podcast aspect, and this is similar template to that. Same thing, same message, but now you got video you can see, audio you can't. So I'm gonna stop right here to see if anybody has any questions so far. Have you heard anything that you didn't know? Uh, has it encouraged you to to get into audio podcasting or share what some of your goals are with audio podcasting? I'm going to start right here and just wait for comments. You can put them in the chat box. Fiverr is F I five, the number, the letter, the word five, F I V E R R. That's a website. So if you need somebody to design a logo, to design a flyer, but not necessarily flyers, you can do that on your own with Canva. Or you need a voiceover talent, though then you can go there and have uh, a voiceover talent do your show. Let's say uh, so Diana uh, asked a question. So let's say you got a podcast, you want to call it uh, in the community today, and you get this uh, voiceover talent that would take that title, put it, put that professional spin on it, you have your slogan. Or what have you got music behind it, they would create that for you. And it's really it starts out really cheap, 10, 20 bucks. But that will really lift up your podcast. It, <clears throat> it'll give you that professional spin on it. When people get acclimated to it, then you can open up to maybe if you're going to get sponsorship, then there it is. The website is Fiverr, the word five, F-I-V-E-R-R dot -R com. The theme when they started, it was like, okay, you can get anything for five bucks. Well, it starts off at five and it slowly goes up. So you're going to pay an average of about 25, 30 bucks for a nice force over time. Or graphics or anything you need, logo or what have you. All right, any other questions about the, up to this point about the audio podcasting? Okay. So I'll go ahead and continue. All right, here's, here's the other part <clears throat> where a lot of people will create a audio podcast in audio blogging, especially. They will just start recording, start talking out the top of the on top of their heads and just go with it. Well, when I discuss with people about social media clutter, it's because the purpose and the structure is all over the place. You have a lot of people who will create these podcasts, really just blog side, not podcasts where there's the information structure is not there and it's just people talking. So it's just a bunch of people talking all over the place, videos, blogs, whatever. When it comes to the blogs, it's just free form, creative, everybody talking in the manner they want to talk, but no structure to it. Now with video podcasts, the same thing. 
when they have a podcast and they have a guest, you have a lot of people who may not know the basics of a good interview. When you're accustomed to watching, say, television or the professional level stuff, and you come into the world of listening to a lot of content online, the structure is missing, hence clutter. So the next phase I'm going to go into is interviewing tips. And again, this PDL will be on the website as well as this recorded webinar. All right, interviewing tips. Again, the, the most important tools that I suggest you have at hand before you start your podcast is pen and paper or pencil. Pen and paper, pencil, what have you. That's where you should start at. Write down your talking points. Even in video podcasting, a lot of people try to hide the materials, but it's okay to show that. Make sure you have this information written down. When you are preparing to and have a guest on your podcast, supply the questions to the host before the podcast. Give them a chance to digest it. Have a pre-interview process with the guest. Simply just talk to them on the phone. Have a practice interview with the guests before you actually had a podcast. This could be done a week before, two weeks before. Get comfortable with the guest. When you're doing that, you're going to have genuine interest in the guest and what they're speaking on. That will transfer over to your actual podcast. True interest in it. And plus, during the pre-interview process, you might come up with better questions. As you get to know the guest, get, get into their, their topics, you might come up with other ideas and other questions to ask. You may learn something new in the process thereof. Let the person you are interviewing do the talking. Now, this is an aspect that I always tell people. When you start a video podcast or a blog or audio podcast, what have you, you have a lot of people who create the program or the show with their name in it. The, the Fred Barry Show. No. Give, it a, give your show name, podcast name, video podcast. Give it a name. A purpose. Your purpose is your that should be the name of your show. Now, a lot of times when you have a show that's starting, audio podcast or video podcast, and it has that person's name on it, they tend to interview people, and that person, the host, is doing more talking than the guest. This is about the interviewee, not you. Now, many times the guests can probably just get off track with what they're talking about. So don't be afraid to keep the guests on track. How do you do that? Keep referring to the title of the, of the show. When you feel them getting off, off track, you refer back to the basis of the show and keep your questions based on that. But if you, again, start with your talking points in advance, you can keep on track doing that. Practice active listening. Where you might come up with another question that might not even be on the talking points that you had before that came up through the pre-interview with the pre-interview you might have the, the run through first and then you actually do the podcast recording the doing the recording the guests might come up with something new that they didn't say before whether you have active listening you'll pick that up and you'll have more questions and then you have a fresh new perspective that you didn't expect don't step on your host when you're doing the active listening, kind of wait for the pause. Kind of feel them when they get ready to stop making a point or they on the on the tail end. Listen to it and slowly step in. Don't step on them, but let them finish the process out. That's the basis of that's some of the basics of actually having that conversation with their guests. And this also applies to having a host. You can be having a conversation with a host, co-host. I don't step on your host or step on your guests. It can apply to both ways. All right. Focus on your audience. Now, let's see. Well, a lot of do a lot of people do the video podcast, or audio podcast. And keep let me stay focused on audio podcast. You have to think about your audience. You're creating content for your audience, so keep your focus on them. 
and become an audience member. What does that mean? Think of points your audience may have. So, okay, I have a particular audience. Or oh, let's say you got a community program. We keep going back to that. You got a community program, and you are trying to inform the community. Multiple people in the community. Think about what the community may want to hear your guests say, or if you're just presenting content, answer the questions you think your audience may have. Put yourself in it and think about what they would ask or want to know. That's what that means. This will provide more engagement to your podcast. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Now, if you're starting out with this, even professionals, they tend to mess up. Professionals make mistakes. Allow yourself to make mistakes. A lot of people start podcasting on any level, and you think you need to have it perfect. No, you don't. Here's a secret. Now, I don't, I don't want anybody telling this secret. Don't, don't share with anybody. <laughs> a lot of these interviews, a lot of these podcasts, these video podcasting, are made to look perfect by editing. It's done what they call prose production. Do it all the time. You can invite, go interview someone on the news. They're going to edit to make it look perfect. That's one thing you might not see on TV. Actually, you will see it on a on Facebook or you'll see it somewhere else where you'll see people doing outtakes and, and mistakes and whatever. Television, especially uh, television and some online, they're edited to make to, to look perfect. So allow yourself to make mistakes. Do a retakes. So let's say you're interviewing someone. Do retakes again. You're you're interviewing someone, you're being recorded, it's not live. That you won't hear a lot of live podcasts. You may see radio, but you won't see a lot of live audio podcasts. So you got a guest or you, you have hosts or what have you, do retake or re-ask questions. If you feel doing your podcast that a question or answer may not have felt right, or you were looking for a deeper question, just keep going and re-ask it. And then in the edit, in the edit portion of it, you can take the first round of that question out but editing makes most of this content the well-produced content perfect this next point may seem simple wait a minute i need to i need to do this myself hold on drink water before and during the interview if you want and now this is a, a cliche if you're doing an audio podcast and what have you and you want to keep it fresh. You want to keep it, quote unquote, fluid. Drink water. <laughs> Drink water. Treat an interview like a conversation. You don't have to be stoic with it. You might have questions down. You don't. And let's say on a pre-interview, the host knew you had a certain question written a certain way. Put a spin on it based on the conversation. You can say, "Hey, we. I know we were going to address this point, but I heard you say something like this. Tell me more about that." And then we'll come back to that. Have a conversation like you would do friends. This way, your audience would engage your content as a friend. Oh, I really, that really felt like a, a conversation. It felt like I was in the room. It felt like I was there. And you're thinking like an audience member. These are keys. Now, and I'll take a few, I'm going to go back to the previous screen. To do a, these are keys of, of people engaging your podcast. Prepare your talking points. Pre-interview process, let the person you're interviewing or, or the host talk or do the talking. Focus on your audience, become an audience member. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Drink water before and during the interview. Matter of fact, another point on that, you'll be watching how many times if you watch a morning TV show or news or whatever, and somebody actually take a sip of something at the desk. Coffee, tea, most of the time it's going to be water. And treat an interview like a conversation. These are the key points in interviewing tips on video and or audio podcast. I'm going to take a few, sec uh, uh, take a few uh, seconds. Does anybody have any comments or questions so far on what you've heard? If you do, put it in the chat box. I had to have people email me saying that they're 
they uh, after the video blog aspect, they didn't realize the aspect of really being transparent and being accessible to the public. And audio, they were looking forward to the audio blog. So a lot of people start out with the audio blog and then eventually graduate to do video. And most of the time that graduation comes from their audience wanting video. So in producing content like that, it's best to start with audio if you if you want to start out in a more comfortable mode. Because once you get the audio podcasting down and you had a conversation, video is the next step. The website to get talents for voiceover, Fiverr. I forgot to type it in. It's Fiverr.com. And you just go in and look for a voiceover time. Again, you can get logos done. If you if you're looking, if you have a name of a show, you have this concept, <clears throat> you can pay for people to do logos for your show, for your art. You can get a lot of things done to treat to treat your audio podcast. Thumbnails, uh, you can connect with an artist, and it's, it's low cost. It, it'll help you get started. All right, you're welcome, Arlene. Any other thoughts on before I continue on audio podcasting? Have you learned anything? Is it, is it encouraging? Are you more interested in doing one now? All right, we're just going to continue here. All right, so you got the form, you got the template, you prepared, you got, you got the content, you, you got your, your goals set, and what have you. And here's now you get ready to get publish you're getting ready to produce record basic steps now again you can record episodes on mobile devices audio recorders or your computer Jennifer podcasting channel with my senior CT students in the fall a lot of work now we're here to help you uh, Arlene so don't worry about that we'll have other lessons to go this is just a review we're going to have a curriculum developed later on this year to help you go through the steps. Now, getting started with, with uh, podcasting, when you get ready to record, record, how do you capture this stuff? Hence, publish it, put it out to the public. Record episodes using mobile devices. You can simply start with, you can go to Amazon and look up smartphone, smartphone microphones or USB microphones. You can plug them into your phones and you can use start with your audio recorder on the phone. A lot of news organizations, reporters out in the street, they do that. Find a good mic and record yourself in a quiet space. Practice. If you have a, a podcast that you like, listen to it, look at how they do it and practice that. You can buy audio recorders um, cheaply, but again, I just tell people go use your phone or get a USB mic on your laptop and record yourself there. Now, when it comes to where to place them, some people put audio podcasts with an image on YouTube. Some work, some don't. And, but a lot of those YouTube audio podcasts are long. There's no video, it's just a straight image with audio in the background. Now, here, if you have a podcast that you want to create and you want to put it on Spotify or you want to put it on Amazon Audible or Apple, or Apple, Pod, Apple Podcasts, you have to start with a host. Now, the names of these hosts, Podbean, that's the one we use. A, a popular one is Anchor. Another one's called Buzzsprout, but I suggest either Podbean or Anchor as a host. So you need to put those, you need to have those that host set up, and they have free accounts. You can start off free. You put those, your content on that, and from that, that host, like Podbean, for example, for the free account, you have to have five episodes up, and then you can tell it to tell it to say, okay, I want it to go to Spotify, I want it to go to Amazon, I want it to go to other platforms. I think they have really relatively eight. And actually, you have Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I forgot about Google, Amazon, Audible, iHeart. Your content will automatically go. To these other platforms but you have to have that host first you can have and it could be three five three to five minute piece it could be like here's an idea let's say you um, and i've given this idea uh, a ton 
where find out and this is the work is gathering the information part. Let's say there was a audio podcast, a community calendar of events in your area. You have to think about where do people go to get information or about events coming up in your area, especially an area that might not have a lot of news coverage. Where can you go to get that? You can start out of your podcast. It could be a three minute piece. It could be, hey, uh, this is the Akron Community Calendar. Here's your, matter of fact, when I was younger, in order to find out different things going on in the area, I don't know if it's in this region, we had a number where you can get the time and date and it will tell us a bunch of community events. It's about a two or three minute audio recording on the phone. Well, that's audio podcast today. That could be put on the internet, provided by you. It's easy work, you read it out and you share it. That's, that's the simple aspect of audio podcast. And then you can have a share across Spotify and, audio, and Apple and Google, wherever I can go listen to it. All right. Again, the USB microphone for a smartphone. Low cost mic, 20 bucks, if that. And you're ready to grow. Start out, because once you start, you're going to say, okay, this sounds good, but I want to sound better. You start to grow, and then you start getting into the higher mics. But you can still get a, a like I said, hundred dollar mic and be on that pro level. But I suggest starting out small. Now, when you want to edit audio, there's Audacity and it's free. Now, with beginning basics of audio podcasting, if you record to mobile devices, quiet room, using a mic, you won't need too much editing. The editing really is to improve the sound if there's a lot of noise or whatever to fine tune some things but if you get into a quiet area and you have your format down you will need you won't need as much editing in it where let's say if i got my template down i actually type something out and i'm reading into my phone and if, if you do it effectively that'll be clear enough to get started on doing an audio podcast or a blog and later on you can start getting into the editing most of the editing comes in if you're messing up on words or there's a lot of noise or what have you. But the editing is the advanced part of, of uh, the process. So this is the beginning of it. Matter of fact, make one, make a short one for yourself to get comfortable with it. And ask friends what you think about it. Matter of fact, if you did it on your phone, just play it back on your phone. So this is a very basic aspect of audio podcast. All right. So, again, a lot of people may think this is overwhelming in this process, audio podcast, but actually audio podcasting is a lot easier than it is video. Your, your face is not on camera, but you may need steps. Now, with the steps process or more questions on how to get started, preparing your content, anything, you can email me at fbarrett at pbswestonreserve.org. You got the scan code on the screen. It'll take you to the digital storytelling page where you can look at past presentations, download PDFs. And again, this PDF will be with this recording, this webinar, in the next day or so. You can go back. Most of the people, when they look to start a podcast, it's the template part and preparing the, preparing the, the information for that. But actually, before that, it's really just getting up the nerve to start it. Well, audio podcasting is the best way, the easiest way to start for most of the people I know I, I bring into the digital content world. All right, I'm going to stop right here to see if anybody has any questions or thoughts so far. I uh, wanted to slow it down. If you need me to go back to some partic uh, particular points, I can do that as well. So for those who have been listening, have you come up with any questions and a better insight on audio podcasts? What are your goals? Are you looking to start one? I know earlier, um, Jennifer Rube mentioned about uh, beginning podcast channel with seniors. Students love podcasts, especially audio. Now, if you put them in a professional format on it, that really will increase the value of a lot of students. I work with some youth right now on the podcast. Because there's one thing about <clears throat> podcasting, a lot of people are creating them. 
but the professional end is what's lacking. Now, how many podcasts do you hear with young people on it, especially high school students? Do you have resources for podcasting in schools? We're interested in middle school podcasting. Actually, I would say no. <laughs> uh, I actually, now what's, it depends on the school system, but I know uh, before the COVID hit, a lot of schools were looking at starting uh, audio podcasting training, but maybe that could be something we can uh, look at here or, or I can train them or whatever, or assist you providing products in it. But there are a lot of platforms where you can get started on it. A nonprofit agency has been discussing the start one is information at exact points we need to continue our efforts. You're working with that, and we're open to working with nonprofits as well. But we're looking here, we have a digital studio. You can come in and make give us a call and look at maybe sit down and, and help you develop one. That's what we're here for. And again, with audio podcasting, with the world of information, the speed of it. And everything we're consuming, people are slowly, well, they're not watching as much video content, but audio is, is kicking up, especially locally. The, the, my value, my, one of my slogans is the value of the community is based on the story being shown. Well, not only the story being shown, but the story being heard. When you look at, listen to podcasts, you look at community, your community, and you want to improve it. Look around and see what media resources does your community have to help tell the story of that community. What could be used? If you want to create community unity, yeah, rhyme. A good way to do that is creating a a digital format, a digital story. In this day and age, you're gonna need more of that. From nonprofit organizations, you can do churches, you can do the school systems. But it's that information that needs to put out be put out in a perfective manner. I mean, a professional manner, and well, professional and effective. And we're here at PBS Western Reserve with digital education. We're here. We're here to help you do that. All right. Does anyone else have any questions or any thoughts? Again, this these resources PDF will be online, and the person mentioned. Uh, Geraldine, you pull that PDF, PDF that we have online, and you can share these points. And again, we we have resources here to help you produce those pieces, especially for a nonprofit. Now, here's a question: uh, People listen to this to this uh, webinar. How many of you all actually listen to podcasts? And how often do you listen to them? Again, <clears throat> for those listening to, to this webinar, how often do you listen to podcasts? Or do you? And if so, what what topics? How often? That's the key. If you don't if you don't do it now, I would say start doing it. I listen to P NPR on a weekly basis. I do as well. Just getting started. Okay. Well, NPR is a good one. Uh if you if you listen to uh podcasts on your phone. Uh, the app is a NPR one. They have a good one. I join it occasionally. And then when you listen to part, when when you if you do listen to them, just start asking yourself how long did I listen to it? What kept me engaged? Actually, take notes on that podcast and just listen to it. With a good microphone and a good projection, you can replicate these these podcasts on these national platforms. Treat it with other new music. You have a voiceover talent. And sometimes people just use music and use their own voice. Now, if you're not comfortable with it and you want to take it to the higher level, a simple voiceover talent will increase the credibility and you turn around and may get revenue, revenue opportunities. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, do that toward, I do that as well, especially if it's an article that I missed. And that's I'm on a, <clears throat> I'm on a run. I'll actually be riding in the car and say, oh, Siri, open up NPR 1, play, play from top. And my ride to work may go through four or five different podcasts on different topics. And I actually have articles. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> um, with Jennifer, I do have some articles. Um, I do have some articles from NPR 
that they had buried on their website that I can send you. If you email me, I can see the articles that provide a step-by-step -step for students to do audio podcasting. If you email me, I can send that to you. I just remember, remember that. Okay. Uh, no one has any other questions? Okay, I'll take that down. All right. Again, uh, the next webinar we have coming up is basic social media content and marketing, helping you develop a strategy. How do you get around using nice material in your podcast, i.e. music? Now, it depends on the aspect of music. Now, you, are you going to refer to the music or are you using music to decorate it? So let's say you, you want to talk about certain music or whatever. You have up to, I think, fair use is like 20 something seconds in a piece if you're talking about the music. But if you want to treat the music or you want the music to kind of decorate your podcast, YouTube music has some free, royalty free music that you can use. If you go to, matter of fact, if you just go to YouTube and use and just search royalty free music, there's a lot of resources on YouTube that. You can you can pull down and download it to decorate your podcast. So again, depends on how you're using the music. All right. Any other questions? Thoughts? Again, the materials will be up for uh, for this part for this part for this webinar in the next couple of days, if earlier. And next week, next uh, webinar will be basic social media content and marketing. Now, the marketing aspect, I'm going, to, I'm going to go to from the organic aspect to the true organic aspect to the basics of paid, rare basics. And that'll be Wednesday, June 16th, from noon to 1 o'clock. You're welcome, Jennifer. Hopefully, the pace wasn't too fast. Everyone tried to slow it down. I had a lot last uh, webinar. Try to pace this one out, especially audio, because a lot of people, I got a lot of emails regarding audio podcasting. You're welcome, Geraldine. And again, with the sources, you can go to Podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N, or Anchor. Free accounts, you can start that way. Thank you, Bernadette. Again, go if you want to contact me, I'm at fbarrett at pbswestmissouri.org. Should be any questions, and I'll be glad to help you. And remember, Next next month's webinar, so basic social media content. You can scan the card, the scan code if you look at a computer and, and register online. Thank you, Rich. Hope everybody learned something today. And uh, if you start a podcast, can't wait to hear it. <laughs>